104.5 The Team, 104.5 The Team.com. Brady and Gaz in for LeVac on this Friday. And on the phone with Stu Gotts of the Dan Levitard Show, which you can hear right here on our station, 10 to 1 Eastern weekdays. Stu, NBA trade deadline comes and goes without a without a whole lot of big-time movement. Are you surprised about that? Uh, I'm surprised and disappointed because I love the trade deadline. And, and Mike Ryan, our executive producer, and I built it up all week. And, and, you know, as the NBA usually does, they gave us nothing. They gave us nothing. So, you know, it, it's funny, though. I was trying to explain to Dan today. Um, you never know. Like, we, we view it as nothing. And, and really, nothing big happened. But... You know, when you look down the road, like maybe Channing Frye hits a big shot that helps the Cavaliers get to the NBA Finals, or maybe Jeff Green is the guy that helps the Clippers finally get to the Western Conference Finals. So there weren't big moves, but there were small moves that, you know, were the opportunity for a couple of guys to make some, you know, make some big impacts for their teams later on this season. But yeah, it was disappointing. It really was. I wanted something to happen. Did you believe this was going to be the trade deadline where Carmelo Anthony might move and get shipped out of New York? I did, and I don't understand it. Well, first off, so the the, the, the three team rumor deal: the Celtics and the, the Cavaliers, and the Knicks would love going to the Celtics. Some would go to the Cavs. Like if that was truly in play, um, and they went to Carmelo, and he didn't want to waive his, his no trade clause. I mean, that if and these are all hypotheticals, but if that will tell you all you need to know about Carmelo, like the fact that he would rather be the best guy on a bad team rather than the second best guy in a team that in all likelihood is going to be four games away from winning an NBA title. Um, it seems ridiculous. So yeah, I was surprised because if you're the Knicks, like, listen, he's, he's basically 32. The body is starting to fail him. Um, you're not, you're not winning anything with this current team. It's, it's time to kind of cut bait with him and build around Porzingis. So I was surprised. I really thought Carmelo was going to get traded, but, uh, and I was surprised that he wasn't. Stu Gotts of the Dan Lebitard Show on ESPN Radio, which you can hear 10-1 to 1 Eastern right here on 104.5 The Team. Brady and Goss in for LeVac. Stu, baseball season now. Pitchers and catchers are here. You're a New York guy. Terry Collins says it is not championship or bust for the Mets. What do you think? Uh, it's championship or bust for the Mets. Um, I don't know what <laughs> Terry <laughs> is downgrading the expectations of the team. I understand why he's doing that, but... I mean, when you have that pitching staff, uh, who are now uh, all those guys a year older, a year more mature, they've been through it now. So there's no there's no situation they're going to find themselves in this year uh, that they haven't already experienced. Uh, then you consider getting Zach Wheeler back. You resign Seth Perez. I think they made a couple of good couple of good moves before the resigning of Seth Perez. Yeah, I, I, to me, they're the favorites in the National League, and with that pitching staff. Uh, they should be the favorites to win the World Series. So I understand why he's doing it, guys. We all know why he's doing it. He's, he's taking, you know, removing pressure from the team, downgrading the expectations. Um, but it's, the expectations have been so low for so long for that franchise. I'd like for a manager to come out and say, yeah, this team's good enough to win the World Series. We're going to go after it. Um, so I think it is World Series or bust. I mean, you know, they're a couple of games away from winning it last year, and I think they're better this year. So uh, I think anything short, let's, let's, let's do it this way. Anything short of another World Series appearance will be disappointing. But baseball's random. We know that. Like once you get to the playoffs, uh, anything could happen, and it's it, it just kind of random. So, but but I do think they're the best team in the National League, and I do think they're one of the two or three best teams in baseball. The Matt Harvey and Jacob Degrom contract situations are going to be going to be issues at some point for this team. If you could only extend one, would you rather have Harvey or Degrom long term? Wow, I don't like Harvey because of the way he acted last year. Um, but I'm trying not to let that kind of kind of cloud my my. My uh, my answer to you guys, uh, I guess just because the ground, what is the ground, twenty seven ish in that range? Uh, yeah, uh, Harvey, uh, slightly younger. Man, that's a tough call. Wow, you guys put me in a tough spot here. I would say, uh, I, yeah, if I had to wrap one up long term at this point, uh, I'd probably go with Matt Harvey. Uh, just based on, I mean, the ground is great, but just based on kind of age and, and stuff. And I say that not liking, but the good thing with Harvey is they don't have to lock him up. I mean, they got him, they got him through 2018 with arbitration. So, uh, but if I had to lock one up right now, I'd probably be slightly lean towards Matt Harvey. Stu Gotts of the Dan Levitard Show with us, 104.5 The Team, 104.5 The Team.com. Brady and Gaz in for LeVac. The Yankees bring in our oldest champion, the flamethrower from the Cincinnati Reds, but there's been some issues off the field involving uh, domestic abuse. Uh, do you think the Yankees are going to continue to get more and more backlash from their role as Chapman signing, or eventually are people just going to forget about this and move on? Uh, it's funny because when that trade happened, everyone was saying, you know, the Yankees gave up nothing to get Chapman. And I, and I responded to that by saying, yeah, they gave up plenty. They gave up their soul and their integrity for Chapman. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, you know, it's I, I don't think, listen, you know how sports fans are. You know how this thing works. Like, if he goes out there and pitches well, um, which I assume that he's going to do because he's great, uh, fans don't care about that stuff. People don't care about that stuff. Um, so, and I, so I think it'll be great. I don't think there'll be backlash. Now, if he doesn't pitch well for whatever reason or starts costing the Yankee games, then, yeah, all that ugly stuff is going to is going to pop up, which is really, you know, when you, when you think about what I just said, it's kind of pathetic how we do this as fans. Um, but, no, I, I think there'll be minimal backlash um, with Chapman as long as he's pitching well. So we have Dan Gronkowski. He's a friend of our show. We've had him on here a bunch. One of your friends right. of your show, Sarah Spain, is on the Gronk Cruise. Are you concerned yeah. about Sarah, and is she going to make it back on Monday and give you guys an update of what actually might have happened on that cruise boat? Well, we, you know, we had her on today to kind of set the scene for the cruise, and, and you know, we, I said goodbye to her saying, I hope to speak to you again sometime soon. Uh, I hope you survive the cruise. Uh, and Dan warned her not to jump into any, any <laughs> hot tubs because Lord knows what's in those hot tubs. Um, you know, the funny thing about the cruise, the funny thing about the cruise is, you know, so, so the ground part of it, portion of it did not sell out. I, I was under the impression the whole thing was a ground cruise. It's not. Like, regular folks bought tickets for this thing. And so Sarah was telling us there's, like, a bunch of old couples and there's a bunch of families with their kids. They have no earthly idea what's about to hit them on this cruise. Um, you know, the whole Gronkowski family, it's funny, we do the show from the Cleveland there on South Beach, and uh, Gronkowski was staying literally two floors above our studios, and we were trying to woo him. We were, you know, we were <laughs> Dan had the idea of just, like... <laughs> Just line up like forty beer cans and let them like that lead right into our studio. Let them follow <laughs> us in and they'll, and they'll come hang out with us. But uh, will Sarah survive? Will she be alive? I would place it. I, I would say she has a sixty percent chance of surviving this weekend. If that's not a great tease to listen to the Dan Levitard show with Stu Gotts on Monday, I don't know what is. <laughs> will Sarah be alive on Monday? <laughs> tune tune in from ten to one Eastern. Uh, Stu Gotts, what's one of your guys' favorite games to play on the show? One of your favorite segments? I know one of mine that's turning into one of my favorites is Show and Tell with Greg Cody. What's one of your favorites? Oh, the Show and Tell is fantastic. <laughs> um, wow, that's so good, the Show and Tell. I, you know, I kind of like the, the looks like game. Uh, you know, what guys in sports look like. <laughs> uh, Tom Thibodeau, a butcher. Like, meaning if they weren't doing what they're currently doing, what what could you envision them doing just based on, on physical appearance? So I like that game a lot. Um, we've had some fun with that lately. We've had fun with if Dan and I were athletes, what would our what, what would our names be? Uh, Dan's gotten Dirk Nowinski. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten Con Ortez. So all that kind of stuff is fun to me. But uh, man, there's something about Greg Cody. He's a lifelong friend of Dan. He's a very good friend of mine. And there's just I'm certain you guys have people in your lives that just upon seeing them, they make you happy. Um, and Greg Cody is one of those people for both of us. So, so the show and tell segment, man, like what's in Greg Cody's garage is just, it's gold to me. Um, so I would say any one, any of those games, so I, I guess the one I like most to answer your question is the look like game. We just had so much fun with it. And, you know, we, we, we have guests on the show all the time. We, and we kind of play the game with them and, and, and they love it. So I, I think that's the game that's the most fun to me. 104.5 The Team, 104.5 The Team.com. Brady and Gaz in for the vac on this Friday. Tune in Monday to the Dan Levitard Show to see if Sarah Spain survives the Gronk Cruise. <laughs> and uh, Stu Gotts of the Dan Levitard Show with us here on 104.5 The Team. Stu, hey, enjoy the weekend and uh, get ready for baseball season. I know we are. Yeah, we're excited, man. And by the way, I was supposed to go on that cruise with Sarah Spain. I told my wife about it a few months ago. I just said, what is it? I said, it's the Gronk Cruise. I showed her the whole brochure. The bro Sure, by the way, that's what they're calling it, the bro <laughs> store. And um, I showed her everything. She went on the website. She looks at me. She goes over my dead body. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. I can't imagine the wife being too uh, being too keen on the Gronk cruise. <laughs> but, well, uh, Dan was trying to convince her if I go on it, I might actually die, which might be a good thing for her. So. <laughs> That would not be a good thing. That would not be a good thing for the Dan Levitard show. Stu Gotts with us, 104.5 The Team. Stu, best of luck with everything, and, uh, hey, we'll hear from you again on Monday, 10 to 1. Okay, guys, anytime. I enjoy doing it. Uh, have a great weekend.